National Institute of Science and Technology has published security recommendation for server-based hypervisor platform in a document known as NIST Special Publication 800-125 Alpha. In this video, I will give an overview of uh, this document and the security recommendations. Now there are five baseline functions related to server-based hypervisor platform. The first function is VM process isolation and NIST has allotted uh, different codes to these baseline functions starting from BF1 till BF5. The second baseline uh, function of hypervisor is device mediation and access control. Third one is direct execution of commands from guest VMs. And fourth one is VM or virtual machine lifecycle management. And the last one is management of hypervisor platform. Now there are a total of 20 security recommendations which are related to these baseline functions. For example, there are four security recommendations uh, starting from security recommendation 2 till 5 which are related to VM process isolation and next three are related to devices mediation and access control next 10 are related to VM lifecycle management and last two security recommendations are related to hypervisor platform management now the first recommendation is the overall uh, applicable to all these and basically this is uh, the need for a measured uh, launched environment and this measured launched environment or MLE will ensure that there uh, is a chain of trust starting from hardware till hypervisor platform and then uh, the virtual machine. So it is related to uh, the secure boot process. Once you start a hardware or start a hypervisor or start a virtual machine. So there is a need of introducing the cryptographic functions to establish uh, the integrity of this boot process and to ensure this chain of trust in an, uh, in an hypervisor environment. Uh, now coming over to the first baseline function, uh, its security recommendations. The first, uh, now one thing I forgot to mention is that in baseline function, uh, the third one, that is direct execution of commands from guest virtual machines, uh, there is no security recommendation uh, which has a code. However, uh, within the lines of this document, uh, they have directed to validate and test the code of hypervisor including the para virtualization features of hypervisor platform and in uh, para virtualization uh, there is no actual hardware uh, device driver exist but a virtual uh, machine or the guest uh, vm has an artificial uh, device driver so there are certain incompatibility uh, issues between para virtualization and 
the uh, hypervisor platform so you need to see that and one of the issue is the direct execution of commands from guest vms now coming over to the first baseline function of vm process isolation and its first security recommendation is that the direct memory access should not be allowed and it should be remapped via input output memory management unit so vms should not be able to access directly the physical memory but this access should be controlled through memory management unit now second security recommendation is that the physical there should be a dedicated physical memory allotted for each vm uh, with its upper and lower limit and also the priority in case of resource contention between different vms the next security recommendation is that the virtual resources which are allocated Uh, to the different uh, vms should not exceed the physical resources on the physical host and the last recommendation uh, of this baseline function of vm process isolation is that there should be a processing uh, limit defined for each vm along with the priority of that uh, allocation in case of any contention uh, resource contention between uh, vms now with regards to second uh, baseline function of device mediation and access control there are three recommendation uh, the first one is uh, that is the security recommendation 6 has three parts of a b and c so in a part uh, there should uh, there are certain issues uh, uh, of emulation with the hypervisor so the complexity of emulation uh, should be manageable if you want to execute emulation along uh, with the hypervisor then again the para virtualization which i have discussed earlier the backend uh, drivers uh, device driver drivers which are supporting this para virtualization should not uh, be executed in hypervisor privileges rather they should be executed in another vm to ensure uh, least access uh, to para virtualization so that if there is any incompatibility issue then these issues should not propagate an entire hypervisor virtual uh, platform rather they should contain in a specific vm then there is a pass through and it is also known as self virtualization so the vm should not access uh, the Uh, device drivers uh, or the direct memory access rather it should be mediated through memory management unit now the seventh security recommendation is that there should be a white list or access control list uh, for each vm uh, for all the devices it can access and then uh, each vm or the cluster uh, should have uh, upper and lower bound of network bandwidth and input output uh, bandwidths then with regards to baseline function 4 uh, that is vm life cycle management the first security recommendation is that there should be a 
तो फिर स्टैंडर्डाइज्ड वीएम इमेज लाइब्रेरी एंड ऑल द वीएम इमेजेस इन दिस लाइब्रेरी शुड बी पेस्ट एंड अपडेटेड एंड ऑल दिस इमेजेस इन दिस वीएम इमेज लाइब्रेरी शुड हैव आर डिजिटल सिग्नेचर टू एंश्योर देयर अथेंटिसिटी and this uh, the access to this image library should be controlled and uh, we should use uh, tls that is transport layer security uh, protocol to access and to store uh, vm images in this vm library and there should be a secure protocol for live migration of virtual machines then uh, the we should perform security monitoring of the virtual machines and we should also uh, protect vm through antivirus and intrusion detection and prevention systems and this uh, continuous security monitoring should be performed outside of vm in a hardware uh, hardened security virtual appliance so these security tools should not be installed in the vm uh, which is being monitored and there should be a a kind of separation then all these uh, signatures of antivirus intrusion detection and prevention systems or the firewalls uh, should be updated regularly and if there is any change in the configuration of vms then uh, your configuration management software should generate alerts for the administrator and most importantly the administrator access should be monitored and it should be defined that what administrator can access what kind of objects and what all actions each administrator can perform on each object each type of object then with regards to baseline function 5 that is management of hypervisor platform there should be a centralized enterprise level virtualization management software uh to perform administration of hypervisor platform and uh, this virtualization management software should be used to perform administration functions for the ne virtualized network virtualized storage virtualized uh, memory and also the virtualized processing power and also the overall hardening of the vms and virtualization platform the last security recommendation is that uh, the the administration and management functions uh, should be performed over a dedicated network interface card or the virtualization network uh, should be dedicated to perform management or administration functions uh, and we should also implement a firewall uh, on this virtualized uh, network so the management and administration functions uh, should be secured by using firewalls and dedicated network or dedicated network interface card so this was all thank you